morning, my name is Josh from Cyclopes Oz and this is your detailed weather forecast update for Saturday the 17th of January 2026. I've got a lot of detail to get through today including a thunderstorm outbreak across southeast Queensland and northeastern New South Wales, more thunderstorms and rainfall up in towards northern Queensland and just northern Australia in general, plus developing tropical low pressure systems that may develop into tropical cyclones in the Coral Sea and also out towards Western Australia. If you're ever new to my channel please do consider subscribing but let's get stuck straight into the details right now in southeastern Queensland and northeastern New South Wales. A couple of thunderstorms are on the cards later this afternoon and this evening and we could be talking about a potential severe thunderstorm outbreak in a couple of pockets of southeastern Queensland, particularly later on into the afternoon and the evening when that, when that southeasterly change comes in. We could be talking about a higher end severe thunderstorm or two down into the scenic rim or even into the Lockyer Valley or the Wyvernhoe Outlook and definitely into the northeast of New South Wales as that sea breeze does sweep through. Today is not going to be a crazy outbreak by any stretch of the imagination. We will still see some solid and half decent thunderstorm activity and you can see on the convective forecast models which are our high resolution, hyper accurate forecast models. You can see a couple of areas to watch here, particularly through the scenic rim and up in towards the Lockyer Valley. This will definitely be the hot seat through uh, today into the Granite Belt and the Darling Downs, then like I said, into the scenic rim and the Lockyer region. Uh, definitely this black outline here will be the hot seat for these stronger thunderstorms, may even extending over into the Gold Coast hinterland as well. But what we're going to be seeing here is a bit of a weak southeasterly change coming through, and that's going to happen later into the afternoon, probably around five or six o'clock. And that's where we're going to see our southerlies sweep through. Uh, and that's generally speaking, a pretty strong trigger for southeastern Queensland, but typically what we see is southerly winds here coming in, replacing those calmer conditions out of the northeast where winds through the morning hours blow about 10 to 15 knots, and then they increase into the afternoon hours as that sea breeze comes in up to about 20 or 30 or 35 knots, which is where you see those sea breeze gusts pushing close to 60 kilometres an hour, and that can be really favourable and conducive for thunderstorm development. Today is not going to be anything like that. It is still a bit of a sea breeze coming through, but it's a pretty weak trigger, all things considered, and we don't actually have that much in the way of very strong wind gusts coming through as a result of this weather system, uh, which means that those thunderstorms are going to be a little bit fewer and further to come by. They're going to be a little bit more isolated in nature because we're really looking at localised impacts here from these thunderstorms. And for the most part as well, if we were to take a look at a convective sounding here uh, in the scenic rim, for example, you can see that we've got very, uh, you know, very slow moving thunderstorm uh, on the forecast here because these wind barbs are really kind of variable winds in the low levels of the atmosphere here. And even into the lower mid levels of the atmosphere, variable winds with very uh, weak uh, values here between five to 10 knots, which means these thunderstorms, whilst they will be moving off in a certain direction here, likely off towards the um, uh, northwest uh, initially, and then they'll eventually swing back out towards the northeast into a bit more of a typical pattern later on into the night as they do continue to develop, but they'll be moving very slowly, which means big rain dumpers is kind of our main threat throughout the course of today and towards southeast Queensland. Thunderstorms with damaging wind gusts and locally heavy to locally intense rainfall accumulation is definitely a possibility. We also do have some healthy convective available potential energy as well, which is instability in the environment, which uh, we can use to get a gr uh, grasp on how big the hail is going to be. And you can see, and, you know, numbers between 1,500 to 2,000 is nothing to scoff at. They're not the biggest numbers in the world. We're not talking about a November or a December outbreak here, but for late January, this is looking half decent for some hail. We may be looking at stones between three to five centimetres. Yesterday, we saw some pretty big hailstones in towards northeastern New South Wales, around that five or six centimetre mark. And whilst it's not likely to be as big today because the convective available potential energy and also the lift in the environment is just a little bit lower than what it was yesterday for New South Wales, we may still see some large and the, there is an outside chance of some localised giant hailstones into the scenic rim but for now the chance of that is pretty minimal at best. We see a return to calmer conditions as a bit more stability returns to southeast Queensland through Sunday. You can see still a few showers expected here and there and heavy rainfall forecast be pretty prevalent through today and tomorrow across the north, uh, north uh, New South Wales north coast and parts of the central coast as well but for the most part with that southeasterly flow kicking up later tonight we're going to be seeing showers and maybe the odd thunderstorm or two moving into southeastern Queensland out into the Warrego region and in fact, as far inland as a war ago through tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow evening. Now, we do have a little bit of convective available potential energy, so that does uh, increase the risk of thundery downpours tomorrow morning and into early tomorrow afternoon, especially around the Brisbane area. We may also see some accumulations of small hailstones tomorrow uh, late morning into early afternoon. So remain vigilant for that as well. And just keep in mind that we could be talking about some isolated but still very heavy rainfall across southeast Queensland tomorrow afternoon and evening. Pushing things further beyond that, you can see Monday a return to calmer and more collected conditions conditions across southeast Queensland. Limited shower and thunderstorm activity is expected, just a possible shower here and there for coastal regions. Tuesday is a similar story. Wednesday, things return to a bit more of a stormy pattern here as a trough sets itself up a little bit further inland. Thursday, Friday and Sunday, under the influence of that high pressure ridge that you can see building offshore into the Tasman Sea, means that things remain a little bit calmer through the southeast coast. So a couple more thunderstorms, then a few showers and maybe another thunderstorm and then calmer conditions return for the end of the week and potentially out towards next weekend as well. And you can see we do then have systems out into the coral sea that 
are worth monitoring at this point in time. Now, just before I turn things a little bit more tropical, let's talk about rainfall accumulations in the next couple of hours here across the New South Wales uh, Central Coast. We do have some heavy rainfall set itself up currently into the Hunter region, I believe, and a couple of thunderstorms and showers here oh, just offshore from the Hunter region, the Sydney region. You can see a few showers here getting jammed up into the Warragamba area. Uh, and that's because we've got a weak low pressure system here situated offshore from the Central Coast of New South Wales, which is tracking up towards the northeast. And throughout the course of today, we are going to see heavy showers and thunderstorms streaming into this part of the New South Wales coastline. Falls between 40 to 80 millimetres are expected, increasing to 120 millimetres in a few spots, particularly into exposed coastal locations such as uh, the Nelson Bay area or around Newcastle, about as far north as Kempsey and Port Macquarie. Rainfall accumulations into the Barrington Tops may exceed 100 millimetres, they may not. You can see some half decent rainfall accumulations through here, and that's sort of the stuff that we're expecting as a result of this low pressure system tracking up towards the northeast. Just rainfall here coming out of that uh, southeasterly pattern and getting itself jammed up against the coastline throughout the afternoon and the evening, with showers moving progressively more and more north throughout the remainder of today and then into tomorrow, where the heaviest rainfall is expected to occur around the Foster and the Port Macquarie area. So we will be, we will be keeping close tabs on that. But in terms of the flooding or the flash flooding risk, it's pretty minimal right now. I'm not expecting anything too crazy to get itself going on that front. We did have some pretty wacky forecast uh, or forecasts earlier on in the week, but they've since dissipated. We're not looking at five or 600 millimetres coming through. We never were, to be honest. For that sort of rainfall to get itself set up, we'd need a very strong low pressure system. And we just don't have that. I mean, you'd be hard pushed to really detect where the low pressure system is right now, just based off the visible satellite imagery, because it is such a weak and messy and disorganized weather system right now along the New South Wales coastline. That's also representative in wind observations, which are nothing special here. 25 knots here, gusting 35 at Sydney Airport, 22 knots here at Montague uh, Island Lighthouse, just uh, towards the north of Bega. So uh, wind observations not supportive of a strong tropical low at this point, a strong low pressure system rather, at this point in time. And I'm itching to turn this video tropical, as you can just tell. So let's start things off with the situation right now. What is happening around the nation's tropics? Well, there's a couple of points of interest. We have the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Koji here around the Darwin area, and that's going to be bringing very heavy rainfall to Darwin, and especially through coastal locations around the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf throughout the remainder of today. We've got that monsoon trough, which is still very weak here across the Northern Territory and into the Kimberley region of WA. A lot of the monsoonal activity has parted ashore from North Queensland here, so that means that rainfall is now going to uh, really reduce in the next couple of days for most areas. In fact, for most areas, rainfall is going to completely clear out, and that will give rivers a bit of time to drop and, you know, uh, really get themselves out into the ocean and those water levels to drop, which is very good news indeed, because we do have some very significant flooding on going up there, particularly in towards northwestern uh, Queensland and into the central coalfields and highlands. Tropical low 14U is spinning itself up quite nicely. It's got a nice CDO, or central dense overcast, which is just that cluster of thunderstorms around the storm centre. That monsoon will flow here into the Solomon Sea around the Solomon Islands, heading over towards Vanuatu and New Caledonia, is feeding the system up quite nicely, so it's got a pretty good breakfast this morning. Uh, and then this system is expected to make that U-turn down, bypassing New Caledonia now, and then heading towards Norfolk Island, and then eventually off towards New Zealand, but no threat to either of those locations. New Caledonia may get cyclonic force winds early next week, depending on how the system does develop. But in terms of a Queensland threat here, this system is not expected to approach Queensland in any kind of meaningful capacity here. It's not going to come within about 1,500 kilometres of the Queensland coastline. So that's good news. We're not expecting any impacts along Queensland, which is, yeah, very good news because they just do not need another tropical cyclone at this point in time. So the future of this tropical picture, we're expecting something to develop here around the Cape York Peninsula in about uh, five or six days' time, and that's likely to move out into the Coral Sea where development is expected to occur now. We are likely to see a tropical low offshore from the north and the far north Queensland coast. We're also likely to see the remnants of ex-tropical cyclone Koji, which is now being designated as tropical low 16U, move out into the warm waters of Western Australia, and then eventually, by probably around next weekend, make a U-turn back in towards the West Australian coastline. Where if that's likely to be at this point in time, it could be the Kimberley region, it could be the Pilbara coastline. It may even make it as far out as Exmouth before making that U-turn, and we could be seeing a pretty significant tropical cyclone landfall as a result here you know, from this tropical cyclone. In fact, some forecast models are now calling for category three to five or sort of in that range. So this is definitely a watch very closely situation now for those watching in the Pilbara or the Kimberley region. Uh, further out into the Coral Sea, I'm not really expecting anything too significant to get hold. So let's start things off with a forecast into the Coral Sea considering that's going to be the uh, st storm that impacts more people or likely to impact more people. As we push this forecast modelling out, you can see an enhancement in shower and thunderstorm activity expected throughout the remainder of this weekend. And you can see that really does begin to pick up through the Cape York Peninsula as we head out towards next week. And significant rainfall accumulations are expected on the western edge of the Cape York Peninsula around the Gulf of Carpentaria, tending to heavy showers and thunderstorms at times through Tuesday and Wednesday through much of the Cape York Peninsula. And then this is where we're expecting our tropical low to begin development here offshore from the Cape York Peninsula, whether that's in the 
Gulf of Carpentaria or out into the Coral Sea, it's likely to kick itself up sometime around Tuesday or Wednesday next week. And that will translate to isolated areas of very heavy rainfall through Cape York and then potentially down into the Daintree Rainforest and maybe even the Cassiar Coast as well. The future of this system does remain relatively uncertain and it's heavily dependent on where that monsoon trough does set itself up. So we're likely to see this system here head out into the Coral Sea and a general southeasterly motion is expected from that point in time, which means if it does, and it's very likely to do so now, get itself out into the Coral Sea, it's actually going to pull, relatively speaking, away from the Queensland coastline as it intensifies. And as such, Queensland impacts are expected to be pretty minimal if they even occur at this point in time. Of course, things can change and that's why we make these forecasts to monitor the situation and to give the latest updates. But at this point in time, this is not a major concern for Queensland in any way, shape or form. Now, some of the more uh, aggressive ensemble models are calling for this uh, storm here to make a bit of a turn towards Queensland and then make that turn away. Either way you cut it, it's not expected to make landfall at this point in time, definitely not as a tropical cyclone in the next week or so, but we may be talking about some periods of heavy rainfall through the far north qu uh, coastline of Queensland, but I'm pretty uncertain on this right now, just considering the fact that this system is actually going to be pulling away from Queensland, relatively speaking, as opposed to drawing into the coastline. And it's also not expected to be an absolutely massive system anymore. A couple of forecast runs ago, we were sort of talking around that tr uh, tropical cyclone Koji development size, which was huge. But right now I'm kind of leaning on a similar story to what tropical cyclone Koji was doing as it developed, very broad and messy system. But this one here is slightly smaller and slightly more organized as a result moving things over towards Western Australia. This is a very interesting one over here. We could be talking about a pretty significant system offshore from Western Australia, and the reason behind it is just because a lot of rainfall here developing around the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf, so there's obviously a lot of moisture in the atmosphere here coming in from the uh, monsoon, and this weekend is going to be pretty significant rainfall-wise through parts of the top end of the Northern Territory, particularly into the northwest coast around the Darwin area. Having a look at rainfall accumulations right now through this weekend and then out towards early next week, this is a look at seven-day rainfall accumulations here. Maximum numbers around the Darwin area between two 200 to 500 millimetres, increasing closer to the coastline here, uh, getting up towards the four, five, six, or even up towards the 700 millimetre mark. And then offshore, you can see because of the stagnant nature of this low pressure system, massive rainfall accumulations become a possibility. Now, the general trend with the forecast models keeps these 1500 millimetre plus rainfall accumulations far enough offshore as to where they're not a concern for the Northern Territory coastline. Plus, considering the fact that the majority of this rainfall, regardless of how this system develops, is expected to be coastal based, which means that flooding is actually not expected to be that much of a problem. But I would just like to say for those in the northwest, particularly between Darwin down to about Kununurra or Wyndham along the coastline, expect to be cut off for a prolonged period of time, just considering the fact that anywhere more than about two or 300 millimetres in these areas will cause a little bit of damage to the road network, particularly for unsealed roads, and some significant rises to river, river levels can be expected. But access should be restored by late next week and towards early next weekend, but definitely begin to make your preparations and your planning around that. If you live outside of Darwin, but south of Darwin down towards Kununurra and Wyndham, plan ahead and prepare to be cut off for a prolonged period of time if you have uh, dirt road access. Sealed roads shouldn't be a problem unless there is flooding, which is not expected to be a significant concern right now. But again, I will keep tabs on that situation as well. Now, looking at the forecast of the system here, it has changed a little bit from yesterday, but I believe that's just because the forecast models are waking up on a bit of a different bed right now. So what we're looking at here is the European forecast taking the system into the Kimberley region and then hugging the West Australian coastline through uh, next week through its formative stages. And what we've been seeing over the last couple of days is this system here heading out into the Indian Ocean pretty consistently and then making that U-turn back down towards Western Australia, uh, sort of towards the end of next week. Uh, Friday, I said that that U-turn was likely to happen. Now, this system isn't expected to get anywhere ridiculously far away from the West Australian coastline. We're not going to see this get close to Indonesia or anything like that, but it's expected to remain far enough away that it could, significant intensification remains a possibility. Now, with the system's current forecast track, it kind of hugs the coastline before diving inland, and that's a possibility right now, and definitely something that could throw a bunch of nails into the forecast. So, this is a another aspect that we need to be keeping close watch on. Um, whether or not this system is going to hug that Kimberley coastline or that Pilbara coastline, if it does, we'll obviously be talking about a much weaker and a much less dangerous tropical cyclone threat. But if this system does actually take that more sort of west-southwesterly motion like this arrow here, and then that sharp southwesterly motion or southeasterly motion rather into the uh, Kimberley or the Pilbara coastline by the end of next week, then we could be talking about a very high-end severe tropical cyclone impact between Category 3 up towards Category 5. So this is definitely something worth watching right now. And my advice 
advice to people between Columbaroo down to about Exmouth, including Caratha, Onslow and Port Hedland and other adjacent communities, particularly those within about 100 kilometres of the coastline. Broome as well, might I add. Watch this space very closely. Watch the situation very closely. Uh, there's no immediate tropical cyclone threat right now, but one may be developing in the next couple of days. And we'll have a little bit more of an idea in regards to what these forecast models are expecting. All of those uh, more reliable forecast models are suggesting the system to remain uh, on that further offshore track, which does mean a much more significant tropical cyclone impact is a possibility. But for right now, details still pretty murky. And considering that we have had this, you know, different run from the Euro this morning, that does throw a couple of spanners into the works here in terms of the inconsistencies and the incongruencies that we currently are witnessing here on the forecast models. But just for fun's sake, and I didn't do this at the start of this segment, just not to incite panic or worry, but having a look at some of the more major forecast models as well, Icon having a Cyclone Vance type situation here with uh, Exmouth, a 928, 930 millibar system going in towards Exmouth. I mean, we'd be looking at here uh, winds well in excess of 250 kilometers an hour, so that would flatten Exmouth. So it gives you the idea that if something does get itself offshore, it's not going to have too much standing in the way of it, and a very significant tropical cyclone remains a possibility as a result. Anyways, that is going to do it though for today's weather forecast update. If you have enjoyed it or found it informative, then please do consider leaving a like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. A massive thank you to my channel sponsors. There's over 200 of them right now. Their names are on screen right now and I could not really show without them. And of course, if you too want to get a name mentioned at this part of the forecast update, then do consider clicking the join button down below. It is the best way to financially support uh, this page. But anyways, that is going to do it though uh, for today. Have a great weekend. I'll be back this afternoon with a tropical update on the Coral Sea situation and the West Australian situation as well. I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.